In this video, we are going to create a command bar interface using the kbar library. I'm just here on the kbar library page. I can see a quick example if I hit command K. It pulls up this nice command line interface and I can start typing to get a list of different actions that I can take. Here is a quick demo of what we're going to build using this library. So I just have a very simple website here as an example with a home page and there's also an about page. If I hit command K on my keyboard, you can see the interface comes up. I can switch between the two pages, home and about, and I can also switch themes. So I can put the dark mode on here, which switches it to dark mode, and I can go back to light mode as well. To get started, go ahead and download the starter code using the link in the description down below. Make sure to run npm install to get all the dependencies. And with that, let's jump in. Here we have the starter code for the project created using Next.js and styled with Tailwind. Right now, this project has two very simple pages, just a home page in this index file, which just says home. And there's also an about page, which I've also set up, which just says about. So let's get started by building the actual command bar interface that we want to show up when we hit command K. And so for this, we're going to be using the K bar library, which provides some unsiled components with key functionality that we're looking for for this type of interface. To get started, I'm going to put all of this into its own component. And the idea is going to be to take this component and wrap the app page here with this component. So this subcomponent here, that's just each of the pages will get wrapped in this new component that we'll create for the command bar. I'm going to go ahead and create a folder here called components, and we'll create a new file called command bar.tsx. Create a placeholder component for now. And I'm going to go into the app and we'll just go ahead and quickly surround this with the new component we create. So command bar and we'll have this wrap this component here. Now it doesn't error right now because it's saying that this command bar won't take children as a prop. We'll fix that in a quick second. So let's go back to the command bar and remove the sidebar here to get more space. First thing I'm going to do to get rid of that error with the children is I'm going to define the props that we want this component to take. So take an interface called command bar props, and we'll have this extend HTML attributes so I can automatically get support for children and just it'll be of the default type of just an HTML element. We are also just going to add one additional custom property that we'll add called actions. And this will be of an array of type action. And this is coming from the kbar library. Now we'll get into what these actions are in a little bit. Now let's attach this prop definition to the component. So this command bar is going to be a type react functional component that will take these props that we just defined. And then let's also destructure the props here. So both the actions and also explicitly the children as well, which we can see comes in now auto completes because it extends HTML attributes. And then let's just go ahead and for now, just output the children. And now it's saying there's a missing property called actions here. So let's go ahead and just pass in a value here and it'll just be an empty array for now. So now when I hit save and it was airing out because I didn't wrap all this in the parentheses. So now we can see that the just normal home page is showing up now as before. Okay, so now with that, so let's go back into the command bar component and start to set up some of the interface for the command bar. I'm going to just replace this div with some other components. So let's, and we'll add the children back in in a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to return as a wrapper is going to be something called the K bar provider. So this actually is what's going to wrap the entire command bar and is also going to be where we pass in the actions for populating the command bar. So for now, I'm just going to pass in the actions that's coming in as props. Inside this provider, I'm going to add a K bar portal. This component is going to be what holds all of the actual interface for the command bar itself and everything else, in this case, the children will come outside. So now inside this portal, we're going to add first a K bar positioner. So as the name might imply, it's going to help define the position of the K bar. It's also going to provide us the ability to add an overlay to the content, in this case, the children. Next, I'm going to add a K bar animator, and this handles the actual animation of the command line popping up. And it's also the core visual component of the command bar itself. And then inside of this, I'm going to add 
a k-bar search and this is the actual search bar that we'll use to enter different actions that we want and then we'll need to add one more element here as a sibling to kbar search which will be the search results so as we start typing it will show a list of actions that match the search so we need to add a separate component here that we'll have to build out in a little bit so i hit save and now if i go here and hit command k we actually have something that shows up so this is the kbar search i can start typing nothing really happens this also doesn't look good at all and then if i hit command k again it disappears so the core functionality of the command bar is now in place so now let's go ahead and add some styling to these components. So inside the kbar positioner, I'm going to add some styling for an overlay over the content. So here I'm going to give it class names, so BG, black, and opacity 50, and also backdrop blur of small. So this will add a nice blur effect to the content. So now if I try and do command K, you can see this is the transparent black overlay and also blurs out the home content here. Now let's go to the animator. So here I'm going to add class names of BG white, rounded XL, shadow of XL, display flex, flex call, gap of four, width of 35 rem, and overflow hidden. So now if I hit save and go back here and do command K, you can see this is now this core visual component here has the styles that we just passed in. Now let's go to the K bar search and add some class names here. Give a width of full, outline of none some padding on the horizontal and vertical dimensions, and text of black. So now if I go back here, do command K, now this is starting to look quite nice. So this takes care of the core interface of the command bar. But the one thing that we're gonna have to add is this list of search results. So as we start typing here, let's say home, we need the results to show up underneath in some fashion. So we need to define the interface for that. We're going to create a new component underneath here. And we're gonna call it search results. And we are going to use this to pass in the interface that we want for the search results. So let me just go up here and just say search results. Now we'll throw an error because we're not returning anything yet, but we will in a second. So here for returning, we're going to use another component from the kbar library called kbar results. And this by default is going to give us a lot of functionality in terms of connecting the data source of the kbar, the command bar, and what's being typed in with this component here, and so we can start visually displaying it. We need some properties here. Specifically, we need a couple important properties. So the first is items. So this is the actual results that are being returned. And here again, we have a nice handy helper from the kbar library, which is the use matches hook. And so we'll use that here. So we'll pull out a value of results from use matches. And this essentially gives us what are the list of actions that match the search query that's being typed in. So we can pass that as the items in this kbar results. And the other key property it needs is on render. So this is actually how you want to render out the search results. So for this, this is going to take a item and whether the item is active as properties for each result. And then we need to return the visualization that we want. It turns out, and we'll get to this in a little bit, there are two types of visual things that we'll want to put out for the results. The first is the actual items themselves. And the second is actually a section header. So we can have the actions grouped into sections. And then in some cases, we'll want to visually display the header of that section, the actual name of the section. To determine what type of thing that we're trying to render out, we're going to check the type of the item here. So we'll say if type of item is equal to string, then we want to return some stuff. And this is for the section headers. Specifically, all we're going to do is give back a div. And this div is just going to contain item because it's just a string. And this div, we're going to give it some class names. So I'm going to say text small, all uppercase, some padding, a text neutral of 500, and font bold. And if it's not of type string, it is a full fledged action that is being returned. So in that case, this will be a single action. And we want this to return a div. And this div is going to have the value of item.name, so the name of the action. And this div will have some styling here as well. And we're going to have this be a dynamic string literal. And we'll see in a second why. So we want the text to be black, flex, some padding. And then we'll want to dynamically set the background color based on whether this action is active or not. 
I'm just going to say if it's active, then we use BG and we'll just do this background here. Else BG of transparent. So we've now set up the search results and how we want that to show. If I go here and actually try to type stuff in, the search results aren't really showing. And that's because we haven't defined yet what these actions need to be. We're currently just passing in an empty array. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go back to the app file here at the top before the return statement. I'm going to define the actions in an array. So const actions equals an array. And it's going to be array of type action from the kbar library. There's a few properties that we need to have for each action object. The first is an ID. So I'm going to create a first one for, let's say, going to the home page. So ID will be home. What's the name of this action? This will be what's visually shown. So this will be a capital H home. We can provide it a section. In this case, I'm going to give it a section called navigation. We can give it a shortcut for getting to that action quickly when we type it in. And this is an array of shortcuts you can pass in. I'm going to give it a shortcut of just H. We can also provide a list of keywords in the form of a single string that's comma separated. And this will be a set of keywords that's also used for matching search queries to these actions. And the final thing is we can also pass in a perform. So this is the actual action that happens when you select the action. So for now, it's just going to be an empty function, but we'll get back to defining these in a second. Similarly to this, I'm going to create a second action that we'll call about. So we'll change the idea to be about, the name to be capital A about. The same section here as well. So a shortcut I'll set to A. And for keywords, I'm going to say about and also contact as keywords. And then I'm going to define a couple of actions for switching themes. So this first one I'm going to call a dark theme. The name will be dark theme. The section here will be utilities instead. Shortcut will be just D. And the keywords will be dark theme and mode. And then finally, I'm just going to copy this and create one for switching back to a light theme. So I'm going to change the ID, the name, same utility, section, shortcut will be L, similar keywords, but light instead of dark. All right, so this is our set of actions that we defined. So now let's go ahead and pass these into the command bar component here instead of the empty array. So now if I hit save, and now let me go ahead and pull up the command K. First, let me refresh the page. And now let me pull up command K. And there we go. We have a list of actions that we just defined here split into those sections that I talked about. And also you can see as we hover over each of these and change the active states, we get that different background color that we had set up as well. Now, the other thing I will say is I can start typing here and it will start filtering automatically. So if I say home, it goes to home. But you can see, for example, for about if I type in contact, it will now show up because we've set contact to be a keyword. And even as we search, you can see that the section titles will stay the same. All right, so now let's actually set up the actions that we want when we select one of these utilities. Because right now, let's say if I hit about and hit enter, nothing happens. So we want it to actually start doing something. So let's first configure the actions for the navigation between the pages. So for that, let me go back to the actions array here where we're defining it. And for this, we're going to use next router to essentially push the page that we want to go to. For this, I'm going to go up here and say const router equals use router. And we want to make sure we use router from next navigation. And then for each of these actions, we're just going to say, let's say for the home page, we're going to say this will be router.push and just put these single slash. And for about, it will be router.push slash about. So now if I refresh the page, command K, let's go to about and hit enter. There we go. It goes to the about page. Go back to home goes back to the home page. Let's now finally set up the actions for the theme switching. For this, I need to track the active theme. So first, I'm just going to go up here in the app and just set up a state variable called active theme, set active theme equals use state. And this is just going to be a string that either says light or dark. Now import use state. And this will be what tracks the active theme. And then all I need to do is go into let's say the dark theme one, and here the perform action is going to be set active theme to be dark. And for light mode, it will be set active theme to be light. What I've already gone ahead and done is I've already connected up the dark mode configuration in Tailwind. So for that, I've gone in here in the Tailwind config file and already set up dark mode to be the class logic. And actually in these pages that I made already, I've already defined dark mode styling here and here and also on the about page. 
If you want to learn more about Dark Mode and Tailwind, I'll tag a video I've made going deeper on the topic in the corner of this video. Now that we've done all that, the final thing we need to do is actually tell Tailwind that we want the Dark Mode to be activated. For that, what I'll need to do is I'll need to add a Dark class name to the actual content in this component. So for this, I'm just going to surround this component with a div. And the only thing this div is going to do is going to have a class name. And this class name is going to be active theme. So now I hit save and I'll refresh the page. And now if we go ahead and do dark mode, there we go. It switches to the dark theme. If I go back and switch this to light theme, it goes back to light theme. A really small thing I'm going to add here as well is right now when we switch between themes, it's pretty instant. So I'm going to add a little bit of an animation as well to nicely animate between the two themes. And so for that, I'm going to go into the global CSS file. I'm going to have a selector for all elements and say add apply transition colors duration of 200 and then ease and out. So now what that's going to do is when I switch between dark mode and light mode, you can see there's a nice little crossfade that happens now between the two themes. So with that, we finished creating this command line interface. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And on screen now is another video for you to check out and I'll see you in the next video.